I've never driven one of these before, and to be honest, I never wanted to, because that really would be meeting a childhood hero. I love it, though. Okay, that's sanding of the gutters going well, but I need to recharge uh, the camera. So I took a little pause while it was charging up, and now I've brought in the other section of the roof for the driver's side. And we've just done a slitting disc down the gutter very carefully so as not to go into the lower panel. Fold, and you're good to go. Right, so the mice have been in here as well, and they've been rotting it away. Look what they've been up to. Okay, so they've lived, lived in there, and the inner structure of this is gone, gone gar gar, rotted. Outer piece and gutter itself are good. Now luckily, as luck would have it, this piece on the car, as you saw, is intact, so we won't take this off. We weren't going to anyway, we're going to split it on the seam on here, and we'll go from the back of it and grind away to just take off just that pressed formed roof piece the gutter channel so to get that off we need to drill out the spot well to hold it to the top of the a pillar flipping it round now for you to look at where we've just been you'll see that crease there it's got some damage on it this but it'll hammer straight and you'll see also that it's got some spot welds there on a strengthening bar and that's where we're going to make the join so we need to go up to a about this area here so we're going to attack the back of this and remove this damaged inner piece attack the back of the a pillar and remove that out so that leaves us a section that we had similar on the other side although not as long the other side was the full run including going over the b pillar this side we're, we're joining on a staggered join so a little bit less work but this will need some tlc just to knock it back into shape so this one was on its way out of rot rotting as well. I've just looked at the Portuguese roof and that side's all right, but the other side's rotted. So these are common rot spots if your car's been badly stored. So we need to extract this piece, hammer that dent straight, won't be a problem that. Get these spot welds just here out first, loosen this bad boy up and get it out of there. And that's what we're up to. So I will now start by wire wheeling this face marking out those about eight or nine wasn't the spot welds there and then two remember those two on the top around that area there's two holding it on there we'll get them we should be able to separate off the a pillar or take out the, the gutter channel section as we need we make the cut in the gutter channel section up there on the stagger join of that inner reinforcing plate and that will then sandwich onto the car. We're going to have to repair the small pinholes that are in the car on the gutter channel in brambles. But that, I don't think that's a big deal. And we keep, a, we keep our, our uh, doctrine of keeping the metal, our mantra, our doctrine, our policy. And so we don't use this back piece. Okay, but we'll, although I will save all of that because that's a good repair section for someone if the back of your gutters gone you could always graft that in when you're doing a quarter quite often they go down by the quarter area there so it's time for more cleaning grinding and extracting so we can get the panels that we want okay first job then is wire wheel mark out drill out spots i'll jump you straight to it because we've already seen this operation no need for a repeat of it this is the area we're going to tackle first clean it up wire brush next Okay, starting these drills. Watch my foot's caught the camera tripod. Just take these out. It's a bit of a, a job, but it's not too bad. Turn it 
take two because the phone rang. Right, drill at the ready. Super drill bit, cutting oil. Dip it in the cutting oil. We've already put the pilots in. We started on a few there, you see. We're just getting this panel out, so in we go. more oil just keep it cool cool anybody out there want to support the channel don't forget patreon youtube pays pittance and doesn't in exactly inspire to keep banging videos out fast I'll bang them out for free anyway, but I'll bang them out faster if... If everyone shows support, gives me more incentive anyway, a little bit more. I've got plenty, but... We've got a little community going on Patreon. You get all the photos and the news stories and stuff that's not always directly related to the channel five dollars is the recommended amount if you want to bang in what's that about three pounds seventy five a month it's not bad i mean if youtube paid it, it would be all right but it, it's just ridiculous and uh, a lot of people seem to be doing the crowdfunding mine's going okay but we've got 65 patreons out of twelve thousand subs a low conversion across I know, I know not everyone else is not everyone's that into it where they want to actually pay which is fine it's not a problem that but if you are you want a little bit more and want to support it then bang across there and uh, give us a hand on patreon okay we've got them but i've got a feeling right that there's ones i can't see i'm suspecting this is going to be a bit trickier than the other side because they're not as pronounced, but I'm thinking there's one there. I don't want to over drill holes, but it looks like there's one there. But that's more than what we had. And they seem to be a bit more scattered on this piece than the others. So anyway, that's where they're at. And I'm going to get that top edge now as well. I've done this one. There's a little hidden tab. You've got to watch that hidden tab. Bringing it up for you if you ever do this. When your roof skin comes off. And you're doing your gutter replacement like this, then you you got to the, the top. They're normally all right to get. Can't start really rocking that off yet till we loosen it up on this run coming in. Whoa! <laughs> That's one for the cutting room. Floor, isn't it? I've got to break this side down as well. Okay, so I'll do that next. Hole cutter for that one. Okay, a little bit of silence there. No problem. Look what we got. Salvaged and cleaned up. Into the blasting cabinet they went, just up the road. I've got a friend with a blasting cabinet. It helps me out. That gives us these repair panels that we need. They're all stripped and ready to go. Over to the first area that we're going to do. Another blasted and repaired panel. That's the one we've just been harvesting. On there you go. So we just make the cut line now. Luckily on this you get a little index tab, which is handy. So we're going to mark and we're going to slice and this bridges across onto this reinforcing strut piece. So we take out that and then it, it makes a bit of an overlap as well. So we're just on that reinforcer bracket and we splice in there. That gets rid of those damaged sections. I've gone a little bit further back than I thought. Or not than I thought than I was going to originally do, just to get rid of that weaker metal. That gives us a nice rail and the rest of the run. There are a couple of pinholes underneath which we're going to localise repairs to. Can't see them. There they are. See them? And just coming in there. We're going to fix them because there's enough strong metal for that to happen and do. It's not worth 
chopping all that out just for the sake of those because if that was the only rot on the car you'd hardly be cutting that out under normal situations and it's best not to disturb this so we'll, we'll go with that splice this in spot weld it along on that edge nicely so we'll do our usual weld through okay so looking quite pleasing hoping that hoping that, that index tabs correct it should be we will mock up now that other piece and just see how it fits together before we start doing that cut so the cut cuts in there break away that from the reinforcing rib and then we'll um, we'll connect it all up so we're going to be doing you'll see that that, that reinforcer rib actually spot welds to the that piece so it'll be spot welding to this so we're going to chop this and attack it from the back and discard that metal if we crock sand it from the back it means we don't have to do any spot weld drilling although i must admit it'd be nice just to plug it from the top so actually i think i will spot weld drill this and i can plug in from the top as opposed to drilling underneath here and doing it i think that's better isn't it so we'll we'll drill out the spot welds here and plug through and then we'll do a uh, butt join here coming under dodging around the door frame there so we butt weld that then sand it smooth probably have to put a skimmer filler over it to hide that join uh, here his spot welder can go in no problem with that then it can connect to the top of the a pillar what we'll do we'll connect the top of the a pillar and open and close the door take our measurements to brace the whole lot up and look about uh, making that final connection and then the same on the other side okay plenty going on and it's going really well we've salvaged and harvested thank heavens for the, the shells that have donated their parts we'd be stuck without them okay we really would so first job for me is drill them spot welds out and make the cut for this here here we go welders on and I forgot to say we're doing some fillet pieces so we've used some old uh, A-pillar section sliced it down so it makes an internal fit into the A-pillar then we plug that in so we're making like a, a socket now that'll slide onto it and we can get our exact position that we need and just slide it on and then continue to weld and weld those up so you get like a, a fillet inside it just goes for a more professional finish you'll note that the donor a pillar is a slightly different profile that's because later cars without wide chrome rubbers have a different profiled a pillar so we just have to slice it and shape it in it's not difficult and it's hidden under the rubber anyway so it's some, one thing to know a, a wide chrome trim rubber won't go in a facelift car properly anyway it doesn't seat proper you can jam them in but it's not the best thing so that's it um, those just go inside there I've just done two plug welds for now just in case it wasn't going to work but it is going to work we do that on the other side and we can slot this top section in that's the best way to do it and then we'll put the roof structure in later because it's easier that way so we're going to go for that on the other side get another piece of a scrap a pillar slice it you have to slice it down the middle so it's in two um two coconut halves if you will then drill some eight mil holes out so that makes a nice neat join and a strong join there it's just a better way to do it than butt welding without an internal uh, piece okay so i'm going to do the same over that side now no need to film that i'll get right on and cut those pieces out here we go Okay, so here's the beauty of doing those fillets. If you remember 535 for our aperture, 
So to get it, we just slide it till we're into 535. Oh, the magnet grabbed again. I don't believe it's done it again. The, the jobby magnets keep attaching to things and pulling the camera out of my hand. Wow. So we slide to order and then we get exactly the windscreen aperture that we want. And we go and double check on another Cortina, make sure it's that size. And we go and find another aperture. We measure that and make sure we've got uh, the right windscreen aperture size. Then we also look for our measurements down and we, we tweak around till we do that final weld there. You'll see the profile mismatch now. Okay on the pillar, which is the important bit, and there your mismatch occurs here where the profile slightly to accommodate the different rubbers changes. So what you do is just slit down that one and, and knock it in, then weld seam weld that up and that'll match that profile. It's not mega important because the rubber would cover it, but just may as well get it exactly right, okay? So the main thing is that profile matches, okay, there. So we're good there, we're slotted in. We can now, if we want to, weld the, this panel in place, ready to go. That's not exciting already. That side's done too, and look how we meet that side. Although it is slightly overcut on the outer piece, but that doesn't matter so much. We just fill the weld. But we're at 535 there, and we're landed nicely closed up. I don't know about this side. Well, we've got a gap this side, okay, so perfection doesn't exist I probably got them cut out but I, I needed to be over undercut really so we could move backwards and forwards so okay so I've overcut a bit out there but that's not a problem to uh, to weld in fact what we'll do we'll put a, a liner on that before we finally assemble it and it's a bit easier to weld up we're not going to be firing into space so a little bit of a miscut there in fact actually no what am I on about I've not closed the gap up Whoa. We're heading for about there. Yeah, I suppose it is a mismatch. Yeah, it is. But that's not a big deal. I can't get everything right. Doing well to get this far. Okay, so I took too much metal out of the inner piece. All right, but we'll fill that back in. Don't forget, it's, uh, it's only metal. You can always work it. That side's bang on. Although that side's probably a bit too wide on that piece, but I was always going to fill with weld anyway. It makes no odds. It's fine as long as you've got that fill inside there to keep the strength. You're good to go. All right. So we're going to make some final adjustments now. Get that so it's in line there and flush with those, and we can plug that when we're ready. And then we're starting to get our strength straight away. Isn't that good? So, more welding for me to do, to start securing up this front. Before I do secure it up, I'll go for me 535 aperture. And make sure. Here we go. Okay, I've added some inner fillers as well, of course, best to get strength on both sides. I bet some of you are already onto that, I'm going to say, you should have done two fillets, I have. Second piece in there, so it's a double, double side, it just gives it more strength, it's a, that's a pro way to do it. So we're strengthening both sides now, I've got about that of course. And then they'll help fill the gap in on that A pillar that I've made, because of the undercut. Here we go, nice one, we'll slot this in now, so we fill it both. Okay, this is where we use our jack now to jack up that back end till this closes up. You'll see it close up as I operate the jack. Oh yeah. So that gets us now, starts to clip together and that's just slotted in as I put the tension on it and then we look for the door gap coming back in. And there's our door gap back in as we put the tension into the back end and jack this front brace into that. Now we can lock it in with the pliers just there, just nip it up and we'll just then start doing our door gap measurements and just see how the B pillar does its corresponding measurements. Check that aperture again on the windscreen this side and then we can tap, put a few tacks in for now and then start building up that other structure. So the jack then just lining that back in so that now is coming perfectly into play and we're ready to get our locking pliers on. 
here they are and then our, our tape measure and then we'll lock that like this and then get the tape measure on it in we go so now we start checking our measurements again making sure that all important B pillar gap and this here I mean there's not a lot to drift out on that bit but it's looking okay there we'll be filling that with weld and just profiling that so it blends in nicely the main things to get that uh, that in place okay let me do some measuring now we're going good on the roof fitting everybody yes nice one We are now ready to insert this piece, it's cut to shape and you'll see there's two little brackets and they're going to fit just over that uh, rib there, so that slots in like that. You just get it behind, hold on the door's in the way, door out of the way for you. Up we go, that goes in there, sits in there and that gives you extra strength and something to weld to, if you can see it. So there we go, two little forks that just slot that in and then it lines up with that tag there, can you see, tag to tag, so we're in, that can be a well through primer on this now, so we can do we clean this face, it's well through primer on that, and then um, we can spot weld it in position, and this piece is almost done, it'll need plug welding through those, onto the top of the A-pillar, A-pillar dimensions are all good, door shuts are good, We've got some tacks in it now and it's starting to gain strength so I'll get some weld through ready and we'll go in there with a the weld through a little bit of metal just to graft in there and we'll do that here we go okay weld through on our faces there we're ready to offer that up so we're going to clamp that in position now that goes in like that it's actually got a rail the pad almost done pretty happy with the way it's going everybody so you can spot weld along that front edge and then we'll have to plug weld up that top end when the car's on the spinner okay
okay last job we're just gonna spot weld in those little support clamps we put in there goes one oh yeah get that one we can't get the other one that's a, a plug weld job unfortunately we'd like to but Yep, and this one as well, that's a plug work job. Tricky to get in there. And the last of the spot welds. Also tricky to get the spot welder out, it's out. Okay, it's a heavy beast. Right, so we got we got that in there. We just need a little bit. The, the spot welds are struggling to get in there, so we're going to weld, we're going to make that. It just can't quite get it. It just can't quite get the angle. So what we'll do? Get a clamp on it. It can't get everything. It does a good job most of the time. Clamp on here. That gets it. Yeah. Line them up and then get the MIG on. So we'll go from the back with the MIG in this bit. That should make a nice seamless join. We'll do that tomorrow. But if you look, we're nice and flush there. A little bit of welding on that gutter. And we're good. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Nice one. Okay. Come in this side and you can get it. Oh. Now you're on. Okay, everything is off there, a little bit just to finish there grinding off. It's a bit tricky on the B pillar because it's sandwiched between the two halves of the B pillar and you've got to start breaking into it to get out. There's a little section of the, the roof spar that 
it goes inside it so it actually sits it doesn't sit on top it actually sits drops in so I had to drill two spot welds on either side there there split that open and start picking it out now it was, there's a lot of braze as well there so you, even though you hit the spot welds there's still bits attached grabbing the metal with braze so you have to just fight with it slowly just keep getting in and then eventually managed to draw out the remnants of that spar it's out out now we can we can trial fit if we want there's just a little bit on the edge of it still left hold on there and there i'll get the slit in the skin and just take the back off that this wants to be nice and smooth so it drops in and it's it's spot welded and braised at the top when you finally finish it a little bit of it still just attached there look Hang on, let's focus in. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm trying to talk because I don't want the YouTube to pick up the radio. I have to keep going switching the radio off every time I do a take. So we'll clean that, get the remnants of that off. I burnt through, by the way, it's easily done. Croc sander got a bit carried away with it. But once that clamps up to the, the section, I'll have to weld it at the back and grind it off. Well, not perfect. I'm afraid I do make mistakes. There's one. Got to be careful with that crocky. Crocky needs to come in here now and clean these up too. There's some proud bits of weld just there. And we're ready. A bit more cleaning up. Change the belt. We go through a few belts, but we've got plenty in stock. Okay, trial fit. I've just dropped it into place. It goes in quite nicely. Oh, yeah. Just like that. So we fit in there, we fit in on the B post, going down to meet the quarter. So just kind of like drops in quite nicely with no big problems. You just plug and play. Woo! <laughs> you reckon you met? What do you reckon? Yeah? Plug and play with two hands. Lock in, lock in. Right, what we need to do is prep the areas, get the weld through primer on, and we're gonna start by, obviously we've got that hole, that was my mistake, my screw up. We're gonna start with this end, and we're gonna get a, a weld on this end. Now it's great because it self-guides itself. Look across there, it's self-guiding. Just under that paint pot, you'll not get it because of the, the exposure level, but under that paint pot, there's a seam here, and it's it's recessed out. Yeah, we can go in and have a look. It's recessed out there. Five, four, three, two, one. Nearly there, and that slots in to that. And then what we need to do, because the carl have sagged a bit, we get the jack under the rear again, and jack jack the groove till, and that'll push the spar slightly forward. So it lands in the right place over here and we know where the right place is because there's a recess just by my thumb and that gives you that so you aim for both those recesses to be together then you know the distance between the pillar and the back is the same that's when we've moved this of course to five three five and you can see my oversized cut where I made the mistake of making it too much out but it's not a problem because I'd use it to blend in. See how the profile changes from there to there. And we're going to cut and slowly feather that so that goes out and joins it the same. There's plenty of fillet in there, so that doesn't really matter. I'm going to put a band strip in this just in the middle of it, similar to this one, but a bit thicker. And then we can weld that. That's not a problem. It's just I cut too much off this. I got it bang on this side. But I got it wrong on the other side. In fact, actually, it's a bit open at the moment. Once pushing it, it's actually more like that, which isn't too bad. We can live with that mistake, and it's not going to affect anything at all. Nothing's affected. It's got a nice line coming in. If you see that line there, that's really nice. So that pillar's going to follow beautifully up into the car, and then we do our windscreen aperture measurement down from this point to that five. 35.4 I think it is. We're just going to double check that windscreen one. I've got it written down somewhere. I'm sure it's on here. Is that it? Yeah, that was my measurement, but because 
Bramble's roof was damaged. I want to double check. Swampy comes in at 535, but Swampy had a new roof. So I really would like TC's windscreen out, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have to ring, call, call uh, phone a friend, someone who's got the screen out at the moment that can give me the aperture sizes, just to make sure. One last final check. Okay, and we can put the screen in, I guess, but it's a bit tricky if it's not welded. If we could tack it, then try the screen. It's a possibility. Um, I believe you'd get away with, with a couple of mil out. I mean, the main thing to do, rather than the screen aperture, I guess, is to make sure that uh, these distances for the door gaps are right. We'll need to fit the door before we finally secure any of the, the final welds, because you might find that as you jack that back end up it's throwing the gaps out but I don't think I don't think that'll be the case but it's a time really that side's good that door's stacked out that door's fine this door we need to just make sure door sure there we go again all right so it's gone well I think by the time I get this roof structure in place and some welds on then we'll be closing episode 20 up and we'll be we'll be having a good a good episode there won't we all right okay bit of weld through primer just so the surfaces are prepared and ready we're going to etch prime and then put them in the brown paint once we've finished the welds around this area and I'll dust that in and then it'll look uh, it'll look nice we'll clean the inside faces and spray those in down on them because that area is done and that looked good. So, what do you reckon? Roof nearly done. Well, not bad. A couple of days, maybe three days. Well, I say a week altogether if you count prepping the panels. The actual work itself, a couple of days. It's the panel harvesting that takes you time. Take you up so you can get an overview before the spars go on. Then we'll take you in again when it's all completed. Round and down we go. All right. Well, I'll mix some weld through up and I'll do a few more measurements and just some last minute checks. Okay, get all these areas covered. And then we'll take it up to the car, do the same thing. Two part well through primer again, our friend. Up we go here. Just two coats on for me. Over that B pillar and onto the C pillar joining flange and that face of the C pillar. That's it. Now we can offer that up. We'll just drop it into place now and we'll start getting our lineups. Great. spots along this window run right? should be able to get them we need to just turn the timer down just a touch just hold on I'm going to turn the timer down because it's quite it's only uh, thin metal there so I'm just the spot well has got an, an adjuster on it I hope you can hear me 
got an adjuster on it for the time span. I'm just going to set it about halfway. We don't need long current on that. I just turn the timer down a little bit. Better. go for some reason. That was a goodie. Just around that area we've got some corrosion. Not corrosion, just bad bad contacts around that area. We'll have a look at that. Probably the metal's not clean at the back. We're okay we're, we're good to go. sand the back of that lower flange there it's probably just the, the it's not going boom but the rest there as you saw we got a good run there boom 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 okay yeah there's probably a, just a little bit of surface corrosion on the back I didn't I didn't actually clean this metal I should have done so I'll just scotch pad that and we're off Okay, I've been busy measuring and measuring again, so I've got I've got a 103.9, that's the corner of my door to the corner of here, same on both sides, and it's the same as what we had when we did the car. I've got a 74.5 on my door frame aperture to my markings, that's come back in. 534 on my opening, otherwise I lose it on the top, so a mil lost there. Pillar to pillar 72 mil, that's the inside face. Uh, let me see if we can do this for you. Flip the camera around. That inside B pillar edge to spin you all the way around to this edge, 72 mil, and indeed the car outside the Portuguese shell gives 72 there as well. And we've got, sorry, not 72, 47, 47 mil, and that's the same on that side. So we've got the relative positions correct for the B pillar to the A pillar. We've got the windscreen aperture correct, so that's this up and down. Now we'd like to check if it's actually level relative to the slam panel. So we've got a spirit level on it now. Now the slam panel could be twisted, so we'll do some average checks. We'll go for the transmission tunnel. We'll go, because that's a flat plate, we can go to the slam panel. We can go there and we can go to the dash. Or well, the dash could, could have a twist in it, but we'll get the average bubble position that's level now at the moment if I go off this I'm not level on the bubble so I'm going to jack the car up on the actual dolly until this bubble comes in level and then we'll see what relative distances there are round and about the car We're paying a particular attention to the roof so a couple of pumps on this should start to bring us in hang on I just pressed the release handle by accident so, because the tyres could be different pressures, my jig won't, won't necessarily be straight, so the car's not necessarily on the jig, on the dolly straight. So the bubble's in the middle there. And now what we do, we just check that that comes in all over, everywhere except the roof. You don't measure the roof yet, so you go, let's have a look. For example, this tunnel's never changed. Okay, so that's, that goes across to the right a little bit that's probably the most reliable reading that goes across to the right a little bit so those two are untouched um the, the scuttle is, has got a slight curve into it but that does start to edge to the right starts to edge it's biased slightly to the right not quite in the middle i can try the slam panel going around and 
trying the slam because the center of the slam panel I don't think has really changed that much there goes the torch and again there's our slight bias to the right so that's exactly what we're getting on the other measurements so in other words I've just gone a little bit too high on the jack but it doesn't matter because everything's relative so we should see on the roof the same slight bias to the right and the thing is I don't think I can get in the, oh yeah I should be able to get in the car without it rocking that's the only problem so I'd find somewhere to place it it's uh, flat-ish uh, get this and that shows it quite far to the left so having said that this isn't really straight because it's got glue on top of there I'm going to risk see I could be rocking the car now that's the problem we need to rest it on what I'll do I'll go round I'll adjust keep checking yeah it's moved now it's completely to the left now so I've, I've moved it by getting in the car right let me rejig that but the point is that we're looking for an even bubble have I gone too far whoops don't go that far down there we go just touching the left of the line just slightly over the left just touching the left in the middle just touching the left of the line scuttle is there a flat bit on there there isn't really again just touching the left of the line on the scuttle dash just touching the left of the line so they're all working together so we would expect the roof to follow the same pattern of just touching the left of the line which it is trying to hold it flat so the roof follows the same relative movement as everything else in other words the roof just touches the left of the line like this about there so everything follows the same okay so I would say that this is parallel to the car and all these work out so it does follow that that's correct so that that's the closest we're going to get it we're not going to get it any closer. we're not going to get it any closer than that we're going to have to go with that but everything's in the in the ballpark you've got that usual two three up to four mil in fact actually I don't think I've got four mil anywhere else now I think everything's within two to three mil and everything seems right the way that these roof spars are landing on the recesses and everything like that it's all done so we're looking good what I'm going to do now I'm going to get some welds in some spot welds in I'm going to start securing this up we've definitely got it a very slight bend to the right just touching the black and on the slam panel I can't really show you because I can't get my hands in but it is the same it's a very slight bend to the right you can have to take my word for it uh, there we go we've got it on this it means everything's level it even means the front pan panels are level I never actually checked that but there wouldn't have been really any need to you might think I'm over obsessing with it but that top cross member spar is completely relative to the rest of the car okay so if the car isn't square then that's not square to go with it if you know what I mean by that right spot weld time secure this stuff down let's get moving because we spent a lot of time I must have spent two hours that you've not seen on screen well you'll know by the clocks um, getting these dimensions right 
double checking, checking again, remeasuring, checking again, going back to outside to other cars, driving me nuts. And uh, I can't because once you once you're in, you're in. I've just got to go for it. I've got to just say that's it. You've got to go for it. Otherwise, you're going to be here all day. We've done the best that we can, you know. And that's it. I've reached the outer limits. Spot welds are all in good. B pillar clamped up tight against the. Here, getting ready to go with a spot welder. It's spot welder time now. Here we go. First one, just there. Boom! <laughs> These tusks are quite good for this, so we can get in with them how we want. And boom! Okay, okay. Plug welds in, weld down there for us to crock sand into shape, and then the uh, a seam weld across that. We're going to spin the shell to get this side. I just don't want weld dripping on me. I don't mind going overhead, but I'm not going underneath on me welding. So when the shell's on the spit, we'll finish the weld off. But I will profile this up now with a sander just so I can show you what we can get with that. We're heading towards a finished article soon on the roof structure at least. I've got to unpick. The rest of the skin off the back and the front. Here's the rest of the skin to unpick. It's again crocky sander along the front to get rid of that remains of that. And then there's a little bit of quarter wing. No, no quarter wing left. Just the quarter staying on. Just the remains of the roof where it meets the quarter. So we'll be attacking those welds there on the fillet plate. And then down that run, pretty straightforward really. We might be able to mark the spots and uh, localize it with a crocky don't really going to drill them, I think it's a waste of time drilling them, could do, we'll see. Okay, what I'll do, I'll profile this up, just to give it an idea, just give you an idea, and then we'll see how it looks. Same this side, welds in, across there, this was a bit thicker, this band if you remember, so I've not done the welds, continue them down because I don't want to weld upside down as I said but I will profile this in the same as the other side so I'm just going to get the crocky on there now put a little bit of shape into it then finish the rest with some metal filler
Okay, roughly start shaping it like that. A little bit more to grind there. We can braise lead or we can skim. Maybe braise that and then bring it in a bit more, maybe lead that. We'll decide nearer the time. Just wanted to get it somewhat light, right? Okay, a pillar repairs. Getting ready to start stripping off the skin at the back next. Remainder of the door of the roof skin to come off. And then start tidying up some of the inner welds, get a bit of primer on if we have to, if all the welds are done at the top. Just to stop that flash rusting because that's just pure shot blasted. Okay. Before your eyes is the roof skin. Flipped upside down the Portuguese roof skin quite easily unpicked from its um, remains of its roof structure basically fell off. They just migged the edges of the skin on. So all I did I just sliced the edges and ground a little bit and the skin was pretty easy to remove. The inner rails of the roof they were rotted out. I might show you them later but it was a mess and the car's been that smacked. Every panel and structure was dented or rusty. Um, but Ford they must have supplied them with a new roof skin because this is it. So what I'm doing I'm cleaning the edges of it up. A little bit of rust where they've migged and burned the paint and over the years round each burn mark for the for the MIG work. Not MIG. Braze. Rewind everything I've just said and replace it with braze. They haven't migged it on, they've brazed it on at the edges, each edge. So we've managed to get it all out just by a little bit of it actually wasn't that bad, so now I've just wire brushed it down a little bit with the, the grinder and the wi a wire wheel on it. And I put some rust to F12 E1 FE123 just to cure it and knock that rust back a bit. A little bit of rusting where this area was welded on as well. So that's, that's getting ready to go on that. We're going to bond the roof channels on with a, a metal epoxy, two part epoxy bonding agent uh, just because it seals and bonds at the same time and down that roof gutter channel I'd like that to happen. The ends here will be spot welded on so I'll have to grind them back to clean metal and put the, the weld through primer on it nearer the time. So whilst we're doing that, we need a bit of a tidy up again, it soon gets messy, we've said it before. We're now cleaning the receiving edge off this roof structure that's gone on very nicely. So that's just a case of nibbling away at it with a crock sander till you break through. See the remains of the old skin, how we cut that off. Here just needs the gutter channels welding in place and cleaning up some paint down on the rails then we've got to unpick unpick the remains of the back roof off so we've got a complete clear roof structure ready to receive this skin once the two-part epoxy arrives we were going to use the 3m1 but the applicator guns crazy money and that can't justify it so i found one on ebay that was, that's used for bmws and um I checked that it was alright for roof skin and indeed it's a BMW repair two pack part adhesive which goes in a standard caulk gun but with the mixing nozzles comes with it so that's going to be used along the gutter channel edge. We'll leave that for now and I'll get back on to unpicking this. I'll flip, flip to this side of the car and carry on nibbling away till we get into that corner and then we'll do the same procedure around the back leaving that frame ready so it's crocky time for me Off I
has got a bit of weld on it as well, so let's see how that fares up. Okay, another start, a bright new day, a trial fit for the roof. Richard's uh, giving me a hand to get this on. Snaps into place quite nice, we were quite impressed. Just once pulling down a little bit there. That's just to do with the clamps. But it goes all in how we want it. Into the gutter we go. Snapped into there quite nicely. Some pinholes in that corner to repair before we finally finish it. Along the front nicely. Following the profile as it should. Took a little bit of jigging at the front because there was some brays that I'd left on the roof when we took it off here. So we just cleaned that braze back and then it, it came in where I wanted. Once just clamping up, see how it just pinched that together, but a good fit. Okay, so that's that. And then at the same time, we've got a trip to the dippers. So it was time to cut up the rem remnants of the Portuguese body shell to give us these rear chassis rails, forks, this section. Most of this is intact, it's certainly savable, so we have got the usual damage holes here. But I'm going to repair that, that's a lot easier to fix than Bramble's ones. Bramble's a lot more extensively rotted than this one. So what we'll do when it's back from the dippers, we'll uh, repair this piece. I have got another one of these, it's slightly better condition, and I think Tony, the drunken car restorer, might have one. So we'll look him up on that, but this one's savable. I don't think it'll come up quite good. So I'm gonna, I've got the other one ready to load in the car. The other one's pretty much intact. So we cut them off. There's a shock absorber to remove before we go with dippers. Two 17 mil spanners to get that shock bolt out. And that'll strip down and then when it's back and all clean, we just do our usual spot weld removal. And then we can slot that in. I've not welded this area on the car when we put the floor pan in remember so it's going to slot in and we can tech screw that up and get some welds in and then we'll have that section done I've not cut out the final chassis leg runs that go under the boot floor because they look alright on this so we can slot in at that end this is the plan we'll slot in at that end and then this one luckily overfits so we can grind back Bramble's old one leaving the nice chassis leg untouched I'll probably fit this before I take the boot floor out, okay? And that's it. So, a trip to the dippers for that. I've got two more doors to take to the dippers and a quarter side that we cut up off the Portuguese XL. You saw the recent videos of that. Well, that donated as many parts as we could. Any solid metal was cut out. So I cut an entire side out, which would be the... Um, the driver's side on the left hand drive but actually the passenger side for a, a English shell, a right hand drive shell so someone might need that to do the same repair on the roof structure that I did it's such a hard panel to get hold of it would be crazy to scrap it so don't worry about that car because every bit we got off it's gone somewhere else to a good home nothing's got wasted you know that okay so it's a trip off to the dippers soon I have a few more parts to collect I've got some metal bonding resin to pick up, two pack resin for bonding the roof channels, I'll show you that when we do it. In the meantime I'll get this shock off and keep moving. Yeah, I've restored nicely this are. <laughs> oh my right yeah nice I've never seen that in fact that's that they've leaded that instead of braze look factory lead Portugal you see they didn't braze them that's factory leaded as opposed to your, as opposed to your braze finish wow the guy said I mean the most funny thing I mean he's a nice guy really was I think he's Gavin 
he said well I think it's quite you know it's a bit but he's obviously not looked at it like closely it's a living so I'm trying to get them out now without it's in the sill Yeah, I'm having problems down on this floor up there. Uh, uh, yeah. I'll tell you what, they've gone to town on. They put sound ending under it and all sorts. Look. All I'm trying to do is get the height, the height adjuster out. It's got twin height adjusters. Yeah. Wow. I've never put actually pulled an A pillar out before. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Without much force as well. Just yeah. grabbed it. I told you it detached. Yeah. When it, when we first saw it. Yeah. <laughs> Good that. That's like a mad axe man. <laughs> 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 just give it some. Oh, yeah. <laughs>